this video we will be solving example 5.3. The problem reads, in a vertical jump and reach test, a 60 kilogram student jumps 60 centimeters and a 90 kilogram student jumps 45 centimeters. Assuming both jumps took the same time, which jumper exhibited greater power? So in this example we are trying to determine power. From lecture, we know that power is the rate at which energy is produced. This can be written as P equals the change in energy over the change in time. Now that we notice that the example says that both jumps took the same time which means we can ignore the time aspect of the equation. Therefore, the question is really asking which jumper has the greater change in energy? So we can now write it as P equals change in energy. In order to solve this, we need to know what kind of energy we are dealing with. Since we are given mass and height in the example, we can determine that we are working with potential energy, which has the equation mass times gravity times height. Now that we know this, we can solve for the change in potential energy to answer the example. For the 60 kilogram jumper, we can write change in potential energy is equal to the final potential energy minus the initial potential energy. Now the final potential energy is that at the top of the jump and the initial potential energy is that when the student is on the ground. So knowing this, we can add in the numbers that they give us, which is 60 kilograms for mass, the constant of gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared, and then the height that they give us is in centimeters. So we know that we need to convert it to meters because joules is in meters. Therefore, we can write the height as 0 0.60 meters. And now we subtract this by the initial potential energy, which is also 60 kilograms times gravity at 9.81 meters per second squared. But this time we are at zero meters in height since we are at ground level. Now that we see that the zero meters will cancel out the initial potential energy. So therefore our answer we can just calculate using the final potential energy. As an answer, we get 353 joules. Now we can do the same thing for the 90 kilogram jumper. We can write change in potential energy is equal to the final potential energy, which is 90 kilograms times gravity at 9.81 meters per second squared 
times the height, which is 45 centimeters, and convert it to meters, 0.45 meters, subtracted by the initial potential energy, which is 90 kilograms, times 9.81 meters per second squared times 0 meters because we are at ground level. Now as before we can cross out the initial potential energy and therefore the change in potential energy for the 90 kilograms soon equals 397 joules. We can see that the heavier student exhibited a greater change in potential energy, which in this case also means a greater power.